Colorado first snow that I'm gonna ride in for this year shit crazy man gonna get up go over here I know already check my trailer in gotta go over there and uh get checked in my appointment wasn't until a seven but shit they told me it was at five so I'm gonna go ahead check in get in this dough and then I'm finna lay my ass down and give me some Z's cause I ain't gotta be delivered until 10 a.m. between 10 and 1500. Yes, sir. So give me some rest cause I ain't been asleep really. And uh, make this happen. Got that red light though. <laughs> they load me two hours early. Just let some of my heat out, but it's cool. I'm, finna, um, I'm actually gonna hop in the back. Give me some 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 Z's real quick. I wasn't doing nothing, but uh, I was editing these photos for my guy. I took some photos for him. He had some puppies, and um, I was editing those photos for him. Like, so get those to him, they get them sold. He actually got a few of them sold already. Um, I'm actually gonna buy one of them too, a female. I got a boy, I got a boy, blue, blue ghost tri boy. I'm gonna buy a black tri girl from him, she's beautiful. But, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get some sleep. But I do want to talk to y'all about this winter driving because. That's actually a video that I wanted to do last winter. And that's like around time when I had uh, decided to launch the YouTube channel. By the time I actually launched it, that we was already full blown into winter. So I was like, I might as well just wait till next next year. But you know, I actually been tied up doing so much stuff. So I haven't even been consistently uploading videos. But that's definitely something I want to talk to y'all about. Uh, let me get some sleep. And then when I wake up, we can talk about winter driving tips and winter driving safety. So I'll be with y'all in a minute. It's crazy. <laughs> this what it's looking like from the inside. I ain't even turn the wipers on yet. It's crazy. So one of the things about this one of driving, yo, yo, wish you was, yo, your wipers, they definitely gonna compact a lot of snow. So you definitely wanna tap those free. Ouch. You definitely wanna tap those free when you can. Cause your wipers will compact a lot of ice. And that's one thing you wanna prevent as much as possible, this ice build up on your wiper blades. So you just wanna tap those loose of any slush. Cause once that slush starts to accumulate, it will freeze up like once the temperature starts dropping, dropping pretty low. Like right now, it's not that cold. So the, um, the stuff is not freezing up, but yeah. Gotta put these straps on here. So quick tip, cause I, I'm hauling loads of beer. So if you ever hauling loads of beer, chances are you gonna have these little board things. Make sure when you strapping them, 
you put that the edge of this like towards the edge of the cargo so that it's not compressing against the the package of the uh the box because it will dent any packaging that you that you have so make sure it's on the the edge part and um right now i'm using two of the straps that you pull i don't i'm not using the ratchet straps right now um because these uh, when i reached inside of the bin these was the first two that i grabbed but um so yeah you just pretty much pull these tight and then when it's time to release it you just press this press this button here and then they automatically release but um but yeah so that's a little quick tip i wanted to leave but yeah, we're gonna get back inside the second start talking about this snizzle. It may not be as bad on the video, but my, I, I can barely see out of my windshield. Right. I gotta stop at Walmart and get some more washer fluid. So that's one of the key components to this whole winter thing. And I'm glad that this snow happened when it did because now y'all get to see firsthand like why it's so important to make sure that you have washer fluid. But yeah, I'm gonna run to Walmart real quick and get a couple of gallons of uh, Right next. Before running inside, grabbing this uh this washer fluid though, I'm finna clean my side, my side mirrors. It's critical that you have clear, clear visibility. I'm I'm a stickler for having clean windows in normal conditions. Can't be having no dirty wish windows out here. Headlights. I can even though I'm driving in the daytime. I still always clean my, my headlights. Yep, so I got that clean. Now I just gotta go get this windshield washer fluid. So I can clean that, clean my windshield. It's bad. Definitely gonna need a truck, a truck wash. Definitely gonna need a truck wash. I normally always get Rain-X brand washer fluid, but it's not looking like they got Rain-X, so I'm gonna have to get something else. Might just go ahead and uh, get the de-icer. I don't know if this one have the icer in it. Quickly melts light frosting ice. Uh, we'll see. But I like to get the stuff that has the um, the beading technology so that the the ice doesn't even really form on your windshield like that. That's why I get like like to get Rain-X because of that beading technology. So I might just still go ahead and get this one. Never seen this before. Cause I mine, I just got a regular squeegee, but having that one of these handheld and you get the spray, I might be able to utilize this, buddy. Right here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Might just go ahead and get one of these. I ain't see this one sitting over there. I don't really need that spray. I'm pretty sure they're gonna charge you more for that anyway. Man, I gotta go stop at the food section. I gotta stop at the food section because my um my refrigerator it uh like when when, when the truck is sitting dormant for so long, I guess it's like probably like a power safety feature of the truck, but it'll it'll pretty much like cut off the um the power to the refrigerator so if i don't take all of my food out when i go in um like say if i'm gonna be home for like a few days i have to take my food out so that that's 
stuff so it doesn't cut off and then my food go bad. So the last time I was just at the house, because I wasn't planning on being home for that long. I think I was there for like two days. It ended up powering off. So the stuff in my refrigerator ended up going bad, like my dairy product, like my cheese, my um, coffee creamer, it went bad. So now I gotta replace some of that stuff. So, and I ain't got no snacks anyway. So I fucks with them. Fucks with the funniest too, but I ain't gonna rock out with them today. Give me a. Party size bag of Doritos. Got There's no wrong with them. I fuck with them. Them high fries too. I think I wanna probably probably mess with some some barbecue joints or something too. I had them them before too. Them decent. If y'all ever get to go to St. Louis, there's some chips that they sell down there called Red Hot Ripplets. And that's what these are supposed to be um, like. And like, because Jason Tatum from St. Louis. So when I went down there, they got some chips called called Red, Red Hot Ripplets. And they actually, they're actually pretty decent, honestly. Oh, let me get the big bag. But yeah, the Red Hot Ripplets, they're actually not that bad. Um, and that's what those Jason Tatum chips are supposed to be emulating. That Sargento. Sharp cheddar, that's the real deal. Get me some honey smoked turkey, because you know I don't eat that swine. You know I rocks with them. Probably oatmeal joints. I want to get some blueberry donuts. But these, uh, these joints be too, they be going too quick. Little bites. My son called, called them little bits. Sound like you be saying a little bitch. Funny as hell. Don't judge me, but I gotta rock out with one of them. If y'all ain't never had Symphony, these bitches be smacking. And then I got, cause they always had the toffee in there. But now these ones got the almonds too. Those shits be smacking, boy. I actually gonna grab two of them, bitch. The peanut butter. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get it though. Yeah, I love me some peanut butter. Good thing I ain't got no freezer because I get them fat boys too. <laughs> y'all know I be on my fat boys. But clearly y'all don't know but shit. If you around me enough, you'll find out your boy like a snack. Oh my God. They would put these at checkout. And I was just looking at some donuts. I think I might have to try these boys. I ain't gonna even hold you. I think I gotta, I gotta do it. Ooh, I got too many snacks. I need to stop. I just put put my luggage and stuff in here. But these donuts, though, never mind. My truck is a little junky. But man, I gotta, I gotta tap one of these bitches, man. These bitches calling me, man. Shit, just be calling me, man. Be calling me, man. I just gotta go to it. Back in the truck. Finally got the windshields clean. Now I gotta go over here, like three minutes up the road, to get some fuel. Cause I gotta. If I'm not mistaken, the way it's looking on the map, I gotta go over another mountain in order to get into Utah. And like this fuel hand on this truck is a little janky, I ain't gonna cap. But I should I should have enough fuel to make it and fuel up that way, but I honestly don't wanna play around with that. Cause I'm, one, it's too cold out here. Two, going into a mountain and you're going up and down, up and down, up and down, like the fuel economy ain't gonna be what it's gonna be if you're driving on flat land. You might get six, seven, eight miles per gallon depending on what type of truck you got. Um, if you're driving on flat land, but now you're starting to go up and down and I got a 40 something thousand pound low. So now that's cutting into fuel economy too. So I ain't gonna play around with it and end up stranded on the side of the highway of the mountain and wait for road 
outside, can't run the truck now, freezing cold. That shit over with. So I'm feeling running this fuel station real quick. Put a couple gallons of fuel in here. And that should uh get me to where I gotta go to at the end of that one. like all of the shopping and stuff like that like when i made it there like i had to hurry up rush get to that um get to that delivery because like the snow and all of that stuff it prolonged how long um, it took me to get there i should have gotten there noon of that day when i actually was filming that but i ended up getting there to three and i just literally barely made it before like they was literally done they stopped receiving at three but it just so happened to be uh, people still in the building. They was doing like some meeting or something. And I was standing at the door. They was walking out for to get ready and leave. And uh, one of the guys, he ended up saying like, man, he's he going to come right back and, you know, unload me. He was like, give me about a half an hour. I'll be back and I'll unload you. So that was pretty clutch. But the crazy thing is by me not checking the weather because i didn't know that it was supposed to snow out there and by me ch not checking that weather it ultimately ended up screwing because i was supposed to had gotten unloaded there and gotten been able to get a second load coming out of there on friday but because i didn't check hold on, let me unplug this this couch it's hate but um because I didn't check the weather, I wasn't, it, like it delayed me so much that I couldn't find nothing coming out of um, Utah. I forget what part of Utah I was in, but I couldn't find nothing coming out of there on Friday. So I had to lay over for the entire weekend on Friday and I didn't end up getting a load until Monday. I had to deadhead north to Wyoming and that load took me all the way to Charleston, South Carolina. And that load I just delivered yesterday. So it's crazy. Like that that was Friday when I delivered that. Today it's now Friday again. So this week literally just shot by. And um, but that I was under that load for nearly a week. Like that that little failure cost me almost a week. Oh, it cost me a week and a lot of money. So um so it was good that that happened because I definitely want to talk to y'all about some things with uh, snowing. And I know this video probably has gotten a bit lengthy because I was, you know, showing y'all the shopping and all of that kind of stuff. Just trying to do a little bit better of taking y'all on a journey instead of just doing talking head videos when I just talk to y'all and, you know, just telling you stuff. Like I want to, you know, show y'all some of what it looks like for those who are not in this space. We're probably thinking about getting into trucking. You get to kind of get a sneak peek into what it's like to be a trucker so that's you know the perspective that i'm kind of trying to come into with my videos but um but yeah so with the whole snow snow driving man the first like the first thing i would say is to plan your trips plan your route and you probably hear me say this now probably heard me say it before you gonna definitely hear me say it after but you want to plan your routes because proper planning it's everything. Had I planned and and I and I'm a, I mess up. I've been doing this for 12 years now, and I still, you know, sometimes forget to do certain things. But when you don't have that system or you deviate away from that system, it can cost you. And it cost me in this case because I didn't check the weather. And as because like the, the seasons are transitioning, and in certain places it don't even feel like it's fall. It still feel warm. Like I'm down here in uh and um. South Carolina and it's warm out here. I don't even need a coat to run inside. Like it's raining, but it's it's not cold out. So it's like it'll confuse you. So like I'm not thinking, oh fall time, you know, uh, winter time, you finna go west into the mountains. It's a possibility you're gonna get some snow. And they said that was the first snow that they got this year. That was the first cold day that they had this year. So it was just my luck 
that it snowed and I had to go through the mountains and that cost me. But if I would have checked the forecast, had I checked my route, I would have known that it was gonna snow and that would have allowed me to prepare to leave a lot sooner. So definitely plan your routes. Um, when you're planning your routes, you wanna check the weather, check the weather of, you know, like the major cities that you're passing through, you know, and see what their forecast is gonna be like. You wanna, you know, plan your fuel stops because the last thing you wanna do is run out of fuel or get low on fuel and, and it's cold out. You, don't, you, you definitely don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you always have adequate fuel in your truck because the colder it get, like, like your fuel start acting a little bit different. Like it's, you don't wanna have a little bit of fuel in your fuel tanks in the winter time because it may be harder to start your truck up if that fuel starts to gel up. Plan where you are gonna shut down. If you know you're driving 11 hours, plan with, or, or, or if you got more than 11 hours to drive, you got 13 hours, 15 hours to drive. Start to route, Pl plan your route, see where you're gonna shut down at. And um, that that's critical because it's already limited parking at a lot of these truck stops. Um, and if you don't get there by a certain time, you know the chances of you finding a park is slim to none. Um, so see if there's any rest rest stops on the route and if all those feel like you don't have to shut down off an exit ramp. But definitely wanna uh, plan your, where you gonna shut down at. Uh, another thing I would say is to slow down. Slow down and take your time. When you're driving through the snow and, and when you're driving in any vehicle, honestly, you want to take your time you don't want to be out here ru rushing you on your time like the people you know in a rush that's the in a rush but when you in these big trucks you don't have the same stopping power as you do at, in a regular vehicle like you can stop at a dime in clear conditions in a regular car you can't do that in the semi now when you're going 65 miles an hour so you want to slow it down drive under the speed limit if, if, if it's bad if it's bad out like if, like i'm saying if the roads are covered Ain't no plows been out, stuff like that. Even if it's wet and slick, you still want to slow it down. But if it's bad out in the snow covering the roads, you really want to break it down and try to drive at least 10 miles under the speed limit. Just, just so that you feel comfortable and you give yourself extra uh, following distance when it's bad like that. So another thing I would say is watch out for sliding. You know, when you, when you feel yourself sliding, don't step on the brakes. That's, the, that's one of the worst things you can do. You'll find yourself in a jackknife situation. That's one of the reasons why you want to slow down. They have his belly was big as shit. I don't ever want to be no truck driver that look like that. Damn stomach touching the steering wheel. Like you'll fuck around and counter steer some shit like that. Belly doing what they want to do. That shit wild as hell, bro. Um, that was that was a side note. Sorry about that. Uh, but but yeah. Uh, what what was I saying? Um, God damn it. It made me forget what I was saying. Uh, watch for slides. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't hit those brakes. If you start to slide, let off the accelerator. Do not touch your brake because you will find yourself in a, in a slippery situation in, in a jackknife, off in a ditch. Don't step on. And naturally, that's the first thing you want to do. But do not step away from your brakes. Let off the accelerator and you turn into the skid. So if you slip, if you slide to the right, you want to turn to the right. If you slip to the left, if you slide to the right, you want to turn to the right. So whichever way you feel yourself slide, because if you go the opposite way, then now you're going to find yourself fishtailing and it can end up bad. You just want to let off the accelerator and slightly turn into the slide. And that, and you, and that way you're getting yourself back under the truck. And then once you got traction again, slow it down, you know, but that you want to watch out for that. You want to watch out for, you know, fish sailing, stuff like that. Um, another thing I would say to watch out for is uh, super truckers. You got a lot of super truckers out here who been doing this X amount of, I don't know. I, I don't know at what point people develop super trucker syndrome, but it happens and it happens frequently. And you don't want to be in their way because these guys, they fly up the highway with no concern, no regards to nobody else. They have a, a, a loss of caution. 
And these super truckers, like, they can be very dangerous, not only to themselves, but everybody else on the road. And you'll see them. You'll see them in rainy conditions, snowy conditions, and they flying up the highway, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. And then you'll also see those same drivers flipped over in a ditch on the side of the road. So you don't want to be that person, though. Always keep your caution, because your caution is what keeps you alive. The moment you start getting comfortable, you lose your, ca your caution and replace your caution with comfort, that's when, you, when you're when you doomed. That's when you're gonna find yourself in some tough situations. So always remain cautious. Always respect this vehicle. Always respect the element, respect the road, respect other drivers because things can go real bad, real fast. And, it, and this is just professional tips that I'm giving you from my own personal experiences and my own personal uh, and professional opinion. Another thing I would say, if it get too bad, shut it down. Don't feel forced and obligated to drive anyway, even if even if you under strict appointment. If it's too bad, shut it down. Because the worst thing you want to happen is for you to get into an accident. Now the freight may never get there. So what's the point in rushing anyway and, and trying to force yourself to stay on this road when it's just too bad? If it's too bad, shut it down. Chains, I've never had the chain before. If it ever got to a point to where I had the chain, I was shutting it down. The rental truck that I have now, it has track chains on it. But if I was to go through a situation where I needed chains, I'm shutting it down. If it gets too bad, shut it down. Don't don't feel obligated to doing anything you don't feel comfortable with doing. Another thing is make sure you have the proper equipment. You know, you want to be prepared for the winter. You know, in, in some places we you don't have winters. But if you come from a place where you do, like in the Midwest, you know, in the mountains, stuff like that, and you know it get cold, like you know, you know what the what those things are, you know, uh, you know, you have kind of have a gist of some things that you need to have because you carry them in your ve personal vehicle, snow brushes, stuff like that. But you want to have all your fluids. Make you always want to make sure you have extra fluids. But. Uh, you, in the winter time, you really want to make sure that you have these things. You, you definitely want to do, make sure you do a pre-trip every time in the winter time. Pre-trips, post-trips. You want to do these things because the last thing you want is to be stranded on the side of the road in the winter time. Not, it's not going to go well for you. And it, and it may be tougher for a record to get to you if it's snow impediments, stuff like that. So. You just don't want to be in that situation unnecessarily. So make sure you have all of your fluids. Make sure you're doing your pre-trips and post-trips. Make sure you have extra fluid, but make sure you have extra, extra washer fluid. Because the worst thing you want to, is to be in a situation to where as you're driving up the highway and you're going and it's been snowing, they're putting the salt down. Now, when you're driving, all of this debris is jumping up on your windshield. So you're gonna find yourself using a lot of washer fluid in the winter months. So you constantly hitting that button, hitting that button, hitting that button. The last thing you want is for don't nothing to come out and now your wife is just smearing salt all over your windshield. And now you go to pull over and you go in the back and you notice, damn, I ain't got no washer fluid. That's tough because now you can't see. Now your vision is obstructed. I don't know what you're gonna do. So always make sure you have extra, extra washer fluid because that's that that can be the difference between life and death, honestly. Because if you can't see, then what? And it can get real bad real fast with that uh, with that visibility. Make sure you got your snow brush, you know, just in case you you sitting somewhere, you shut down, and it's been snowing overnight. Now you got a bunch of snow cover on your windshield. And even to get that stuff off, um, keep keep some cat litter in your truck. And you're probably wondering, what's the cat litter for? But I haven't had to use it in um, in recent years because I haven't been over the road. Uh, so in places that I've been driving, it, it hasn't been too bad over the winters. But what the uh, cat litter does or can do for you, say you find yourself in a situation where one of your drive tires gets stuck. And whether it's stuck on some ice or whatever, and you can't get any traction to get, get out of the situation. What you can do is you can pour that, that cat litter over that ice or over that snow impactment and now that gives you traction on that tire or on that axle and now you can get out of that situation. But um, 
yeah, that, that's a good thing to have during winter months is cat litter. Just watch your surroundings. Be, be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you um you watching what you're doing because you don't want to be in a situation to where as you're making assumptions. Be aware of like snow Im impactments. Like when you see like there might be a whole lot of snow and then the snow plow coming onto a yard and they push all the snow off to the side. You know, these big trucks, we got to make water turns. I always assume that it's something under the snow. Don't just drive over or allow your trailer axles to run over large snow embankments because you can find yourself in a horrible situation doing that. And very, very, very early in my career, when I got my very first job, I had that happen to me. And I had just gotten out by myself. And I was driving, I, I wanna say I was in the Chicago area. I'm driving and let my tires run over a snow embankment. And it was one of those big, massive rocks that they use for decorations at some of these uh, facilities. And it was, but the snow had covered it up because they pushed all the snow off to the side and the snow covered it up. And I cut the cut the turn short, trailer tires went up on the snow embankment. I'm thinking it's just a mound of snow. Once my tires went on, the axle split, like split the um, the rock and it knocked my, um, my brake chambers off. I couldn't go nowhere. I had to call it in. And that was a, a preventable accident that I had on my MVR. And those preventable accidents, they stayed with you for like three years. But because if you apply for any job, they'll ask you, have you had any preventable accidents in the past three years, or any tickets, stuff like that. And those preventable accidents, they can stop you from getting work. You know, people will look at you and say, well, if you got one, some people may mess with you, but if you got more than one in three years, chances are they're probably not gonna, gonna touch you. So you wanna be mindful of that kind of stuff, you know? Be, be aware of your surroundings um, because now space is limited when you're riding in the snow. What once was a large road may now become a normal size road because of snow embankments. So you just wanna be mindful of these kind of things and uh, just calm down, take your time. Don't let nobody rush you. Uh, use your better judgment. One thing Dave used to tell me back when I first got my my CDL in trucking school. He always used to tell us, if you think that you can't do it, more chances than not you can't. It's a reason why your gut is telling you that. So use your better judgment when you're riding out here. And um, I know this video probably has been lengthy, but I definitely wanted to just drive it home. And like I said, I wanted to bring, like I wanted to just drag y'all along for the journey. Um, because that's not something that I always do. It's stuffy in here, man. It's, it's real humid down here in South Carolina right now. But um, that's definitely something that I wanted to do is just to bring y'all along for the journey. I'm finna start heading out. Um, they, <coughs> excuse me, I've been loaded already uh, probably for about an hour now. Um, probably a little, a little under that, but they got me loaded relatively quick here. I'm finna uh, go ahead and take this load, get out of here, and then uh, shut it down for the weekend, man. I've been I've been on the road for a few for a few weeks now, honestly, and um, I'm actually gonna be turning this uh, this rental in probably come Monday. I'm probably gonna turn this rental in, and um, I got some I got some some amazing things on the horizon, uh, some amazing things, and uh, y'all y'all will see what's going on in a minute, but but yeah, man. Thank y'all for watching. If you watch this video, you found the information um, informative, feel free to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and tap that notification bell so that you'll be the first to be notified whenever we drop new content. Um, links in the in the bio if you if you need factoring. Um, holla at my boy Parker. The number is down uh, in my description. And if the link is already live, to just click and go directly to the factoring um, application. It'll be linked in the description below. But definitely, um, if you need factoring, go holler at my boy Parker from RTS. Um, if you need a load board, link in the bio for 30 day free trial with DAT. Definitely um, rock out with that new DAT1 app. It's definitely official. I'm liking it a lot. And um, with that being said, thank y'all for watching and uh, see y'all in the next one. Peace.